Hello friends, I am Mrs. Vidya Salahitil. I am a science teacher at PVG's Muktangan English School and Junior College, Pune. When I started teaching science, I found that students are not interested in learning science through chalk and duster or blackboard method. Some of them even told me that science is not their favorite subject. When I tried to find the reason, they told me that science is difficult to comprehend. I believe that the best way of learning science is through observations, experiences, etc. And hence, I started using hands-on activities to teach science and that turned out really very effective. In this video, I wish to share my experiences about how I taught transfer of heat to the 7th grade. These activities help my students to understand mode of transfer of heat, expansion of air due to heat and the application of all these concepts in their day-to-day -day life. Before the session, I ensured that students know about the different types of energies and heat is a form of energy. The first activity that I conducted with my students was about expansion of air due to heat. For this, we need a plastic transparent bottle, a stiff straw and a pair of scissors. Fit the straw into it such that it just reaches the base of the bottle and then glue it to the cap. We have some colored water in the bottle. I ask the students, can you raise the water in the straw without squeezing the bottle? This was a hook question to gather the attention of the students. Then we continued with the activity. Rub your hands together and gently wrap them around the bottle. Make sure that you are not squeezing the bottle. We can see that the water level rises in the straw. The students also tried this activity and they were very much curious to know the reason for the rise of water in the straw. We had a discussion and then I asked them what would happen if water is replaced by mercury or alcohol. Then I explained the expansion of air due to heat. Now to explain conduction that is transfer of heat through solids, I demonstrated an activity. For this activity, I used a cylinder made from cardboard, a candle, a few nails, a hacksaw blade, a cutter, stick the nails on the underside of the blade using molten wax as you can see here. Make two holes to the cylinder such that they are diametrically opposite. So, we can fix the blade into the holes. Now, place the lit candle under the blade a little away from the nails and observe the nails. As heat is conducted along the length of the blade, the wax melts and the nails fall off one after the other. The students noted the time taken by each nail to fall off using a stopwatch. Later, I asked them which nail fell first and their conclusions based on their observations. I also asked what would happen if glass rod is used instead of hacksaw blade. This is a very interesting hands-on activity to explain conduction of heat. Later, I elaborated the convection of heat through next activity. I used a pair of scissors, a cello tape, ink, two transparent bottles, gum. Using a tip of a scissor, make holes of same size to the caps. Align the two holes and glue the caps together. Secure the caps further with the tape. Add a few drops of the ink in the hot water. The color is being mixed in the water. Now we have to keep the cold water bottle above the hot water bottle. We can see the hot colored water is rising up. Try this activity the other way round and then note down the observations. 
After this activity, I asked few questions to my students. Why did hot water move upward while cold water did not? What can you say about the movement of the water molecules when hot water is mixing with cold? Where have you seen such movement of molecules in your daily lives? The last activity that I conducted for my students was to explain the concept of radiation. I introduced the concept by showing them some pictures of convection clouds. I detailed this concept using next activity. Using the magnifying glass, focus the sunlight on the papers. You can measure the time taken by the paper to start burning when the sunlight is focused on the paper through a lens. We repeated the procedure using different colors of paper. The student noted down the time taken by each paper to start burning and then we discussed their observations. After this activity, I asked few questions to my students. Did all papers burn? Which papers burn faster than the others? Why did the paper burn? How does the heat travel from sun to earth? I encourage the students to come up with some examples related to transfer of heat from their day-to-day -day life. Listening to their responses, I came to know that the students have understood the concepts very well. I concluded my session by asking few questions. What are the different modes of heat transfer? Is the presence of a medium necessary for heat transfer to occur? What will happen if a glass of hot milk is kept in cold water? Why do people wear dark colored clothes in winter? Why do steel or metal utensils have plastic or wooden handles? I gave them few more questions for their homework also. Which modes of transfer of heat are restricted in thermoware vessels? Make a list of good and bad conductors of heat and arrange them in chronological order. Teaching science using these hands-on activities help the students to learn the concepts well. Science is a subject that needs to be taught with so many activities. With that, the students will experience through their observations. Then, they do not have to mug up the scientific reasons behind the phenomena. I feel very happy that my students can understand the scientific concepts with the help of these hands-on activities. Let's make the science sessions more exciting. Do try all these activities in your class also. There are many more interesting activities given in the lesson plan and it is linked in the description box. And let us know how your students liked it. Thank you.